Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to go over the limit definition of the derivative and everything that you need to know about it, including steps and tips to help get you through these problems. Now, first, let's get right to what you're actually calculating, and it's very simple. It goes back to algebra. Everything we're gonna calculate with the limit definition of the derivative goes back to the basic slope formula, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And that's where we're gonna start. Now, there's actually two equivalent limit definitions of the derivative, and they're very similar. They're only different in how the second point is described and labeled. Now, what we're doing is thinking we have a graph of a function, and we're looking for the slope of the tangent line at a point on the graph, a comma f of a. Now, in this first version, relative to our first point, we go to the x-coordinate, a, on the x-axis, and we're going to go h units to the right to get a second point. So start at a, go h units to the right, you'll get to x equals a plus h. And that gives you a point on the graph, a second point, a plus h, comma, f of a plus h. And at this point, you now have two points, and you can go ahead and apply the slope formula. And if you go ahead and do that, what you'll get first is the slope of the secant line. And to get the slope of the tangent line, we want the second point to get closer to the first. In other words, the secant line is going to level out and approach the tangent line. And that occurs when that distance between those two points, h, gets smaller approaching zero. So in this first limit definition of the derivative, we have our result from calculating the slope, and we then just take a limit as h approaches zero. Now the second equivalent version is very similar. Again, it calculates slope of the secant line, but with a second point labeled x, some arbitrary x coordinate, comma f of x. And if you go ahead and apply the slope formula, take the difference of the y coordinates and divide by the difference of the x coordinates, we get to here. And in this second definition, we're going to let the secant line approach the tangent line by letting that second point approach a. In other words, we're going to take a limit as x approaches a. All right, so the two definitions here are very similar. One is a limit as h approaches zero. The other is a limit as x approaches a. We're gonna have some videos linked down in the description for problems where we'll apply both definitions to some standard functions that you'll encounter in your Calc 1 course. So definitely check those out, link down below. Now let's just go over some basics. First, f prime of a, this thing that we're calling the derivative of a function at an x-coordinate a. That's just representing the slope of a tangent line. So what you should get at the end of calculating these is a number since slope is represented by a number. All right, now since these come down to calculating limits, what you were introduced to right before this in your Calc 1 course were different limits that gave indeterminate forms. And there was one particular type, an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. And both of these definitions always give an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. Plug in h equals zero here. You'll get zero in the denominator. You'll get f of a plus zero, f of a minus f of a, you'll get zero in the numerator. So this gives an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. And notice what happens if we plug in x equals a, you'll get zero in the denominator, and then f of a minus f of a, zero in the numerator. Now why that's important, recognizing that you always get an indeterminate form of type zero over zero, the questions that you encountered right before this were limits with indeterminate forms of type zero over zero. And you had four standard algebraic tricks 
to evaluate those limits. You can factor, expand or multiply, use the conjugate if they're square roots, or use a common denominator if you're adding or subtracting fractions. And all of those algebraic tricks come back here in the work in calculating the limit definition of the derivative. All right, now let's get to the standard steps, which again, we'll be going through these steps in problems linked down below. So check those out. Now, your steps here basically start with trying to simplify the numerator in both of these definitions. All right, so the first step using the first limit definition here is we're gonna take our function, which you'll always be given, and we're gonna plug in all x's with a plus h, and also we're gonna plug in just a, which you're also given. a is always a number, the coordinate at which you're calculating the slope of a tangent line. So step one, we're gonna take our function and plug two things in, a plus h and plug in a. All right, step two, we're gonna calculate the numerator, which is the difference f of a plus h minus f of a. And at this step, there's typically a lot of cancellation and it should simplify considerably. Once you get through calculating the numerator, you're going to divide by h. You should find some things cancel out. Very common here to have a factor of h that you can pull out from simplifying step two. And in step three, dividing by h, it will cancel. And your last step, four, you're gonna take the limit as h goes to zero. And as soon as you go through a complete algebraic simplification here in step three, you should find that the indeterminate form cancels out and you get a limit that you can basically just plug in h equal to zero. That doesn't always happen, but for almost every single problem with the limit definition of the derivative, that will occur. Now, the steps applying this limit definition of the derivative, which is equivalent, so you should always get the same answer regardless of the definition that you apply, they're very similar. First, step one, we're just gonna calculate f of a. So take your function and plug in the value for a, which is again, a is a number. Step two is again, calculating the numerator, which is a difference. This is gonna be a little bit trickier to simplify it. Most of your work in this definition will be in expanding, multiplying out a plus h, but in step two here, most of the work is going to be in factoring. We're gonna to get to all those tips in the second part of this video. Now, once you go through step two, which is calculating the numerator, now we're going to divide, but we're dividing by x minus a in this definition. And the last step, we're gonna take a limit now as x approaches a. And again, same thing as in the first version, here in step three, when you divide, you should find that the factor giving you an indeterminate form cancels out. So you can typically, in step four, evaluate your limit here as x approaches a. Once you've simplified completely, you can evaluate that typically by plugging in x equal a. Now, before you get to some problems, copy these down maybe into your notes so you can refer to them as you go through problems. And again, we're gonna have problems linked down below in the description, so check those out. All right, now when you're ready, let's go ahead and get to some tips for calculating and making the work in applying these limit definitions of the derivative as simple as possible. Here are the three standard tips that I give to my Calculus One students to get them through limit definition of the derivative questions. Now the first one actually goes back to some ideas that you were maybe introduced to in your pre-calculus course, and it deals with a problem that I find many Calc 1 students struggle with to get the limit definition set up and started. And the tip is we're gonna take our function, f of x that you're given, and to calculate f of a plus h, you have to replace all x's with a plus h. 
And sometimes that's hard. So the tip is take your function and replace all X's with a set of open parentheses. And in any open set of parentheses, whatever you plug in for X goes in all of the open sets of parentheses. This might not make much sense, but let's go ahead and apply that to some standard functions over here in the examples. So for each of these functions, f of x, which again are standard functions for which you'd be applying the limit definition of the derivative, we're just gonna replace all x's in the definition of that function. All x's get replaced with open parentheses. So the first one here, 2x plus five, we're gonna replace the single x with an open set of parentheses. And here, whatever you plug into the function, you're gonna plug it in every open set of parentheses on the other side. What you're gonna be plugging in particularly for the first definition of the limit definition of the derivative is a plus h. So here in your function, you plug in a plus h everywhere. And what we have here are other standard functions which get a little more complicated. Notice here in the second example, f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 1. There's two x's in the definition of that function. And we're going to replace both of them with an open set of parentheses. So we have something squared minus 3 times something. And again, whatever you plug in for your input, like a plus h, you would plug that in everywhere. There's an open set of parentheses on the right hand side. Now this is not only for f of a plus h, but you can plug in the number a that you're given as well. And that'll help alleviate likely some sign errors. So this is a great tip to set up the problem right from the beginning. All right, now again, that goes back to some pre-calculus ideas and you might be already okay with that. The second best tip I can give and this is going to be, again, something that clears up sign errors, is the limit definitions involve subtracting. And a common mistake is forgetting that this subtraction sign, it's gonna to distribute to everything that comes after it. So when you subtract f of a, use a set of parentheses or brackets around that. And that should clear up any sign errors and it will likely remind you with the negative out front, you're going to distribute that negative into the parentheses or brackets. That's actually one of the best tips I can give for the entire calculus sequence from calculus one all the way up to differential equations and beyond. Use parentheses. All right, the third tip is gonna be relevant if the function contains fractions. Like for example here, the last three. Now, it's okay to work with this functions in the limit definition of the derivative, but if you have the function f of x defined as a fraction, when you go to that step where you divide either by h or x minus a, you're going to get fractions within fractions. And that just sounds complicated. So instead of dividing by h or dividing by x minus a, it's equivalent to multiply by the reciprocal. Go through the same first two steps to simplify, but in step three, instead of dividing, multiply by one over h, or multiply by one over x minus a. That's equivalent to dividing, and it will likely make the cancellation of factors much easier and avoid having fractions within fractions. All right, now if you go through the steps applying the limit definition and you follow these tips, you should be able to get through any limit definition of the derivative problem, which again, we have some of those linked down below in the description in other videos. So check those out if you wanna see all the steps and tips applied to specific problems. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed this overview of the limit definition of the derivative. If you're enjoying the content, support the channel, like and subscribe.